head coach. So. Well, camp, it's here. Man. Yep. It's exciting time. Yeah, it is. You know, it's that time of year where, uh, you know, you kind of kiss the wife and kids and <laughs> take off to work. But uh, but it's fun. It's what we do this for. Uh, you know, get a chance to go out there and be with the players and kind of be hands on with them and, uh, you know, smell the grass, I guess you might say. What do you want to see from the position to ask camp? Let's get uh, you know, obviously improvement, uh, you know, some maturity. Uh, we've got a few young guys that are going to be in that room, some guys that have, have been here and, and, and uh, have some reps behind them. But, uh, kind of taking the reins, taking year two of the defense, you know, knowing what to do, moving on, and, you know, coming out of it with some good you know, solidification of who's going to be where and how much depth we're going to have. How do you manage the young guys? Do you bounce those guys around and cross train, or do you – you, you know, typically with things. the young guys, we try to pair them with an older guy so that they can kind of help them along as they're out there on the field or whatnot. Uh, and you try to, you know, we get time in the summer to meet with them, you know, for the last few years. So that helps. You're with them in the meeting room. You try to feed them information. Uh, and then you give it to them in a way that you think helps them learn. So in a few days, you kind of figure that part out. Um, but we'll move them around and experiment sometimes. In your experience, what are some of the, the points on a defense especially that like jump from year one to year two? Uh, you know, I think probably the biggest thing is understanding. You know, the first year, every day is a new day until you get to the first day of the second year, no matter whether it be you know, offense, defense, special teams, whatever. Um, so I think our kids can anticipate a little bit of what's going to happen, which helps our young guys when they come in because they have, you know, last year you had one coach at each position. Now you may have eight coaches plus the assistant because the older guys can help, uh, you know, kind of bring the young guys along as well. Oh, yeah, that'll help a lot. I mean, because, you know, he's gone through spring, you know, when there are summer meetings now, it's going to be really his third time to be exposed to a lot of the information, but uh, it'll help him a lot. Um, you know, and again, it's, you know, there are a lot of stresses outside of football at school, you know, travel, the whole thing to go through in the fall, but uh, he's, you know, he's, it'll help him coming in. Do you, you expect Henry to hit the ground running pretty quick? Is it pretty sharp? Or uh, yeah, so far, you know, most of the, you know, all the guys in that room, and I think a lot of it is in, in recruiting, because you get to know guys, you try to hopefully recruit to a certain uh, you know, mindset of a player, but uh, every every bit I've been around him, and again, it's early, so it, you know, you'll tell exactly how that's going to go as time goes on the fall camp. How has Daniel kind of grown as a leader? He's a guy who talked about that a lot in the offseason, about kind of you know being that alpha, looking around, being the older guy now, and how has he kind of handled that ball? Uh, you know, he's, I think he's done a really good job with it. Uh, I think you see it a lot more on the field. Uh, you know, it's hard to be a leader sometimes because that means you're the first guy to either start whatever it is or you have to confront teammates and, and peers. Uh, but it, he's done a really good job with it. Uh, I think a lot of it starts with what he does and how he handles himself and his work so he can be an example for the rest of us. Yeah, is that sometimes when a guy who's maybe not naturally very loud but kind of has to assume that role, I mean, is, that, is it okay if your leader's maybe not always the most talkative guy as long as he's doing what he needs to do? Uh, yeah, I mean, everyone leads in their own way. You know, they have to sort of figure that out. And you know, obviously, you'd love to have a lot of guys that are vocal, um, but that's not always the case. So they just have to find their niche of how they lead. And, uh, you know, his has been both. You know, his has been putting an arm around a young guy or going out there and confronting a guy or trying to get them going for, you know, whatever they've got going on with them in a workout or practice or whatnot. Coach Brewer told us that while, you know, a lot of people say this in the country, he said that he felt that Tennessee really has the best coaching staff in the country. How would you describe this coaching staff, you know, going into the second season? Uh, you know, a lot of experience, a lot of experience in the SEC, okay, which is which is one of the toughest leagues in the country. We kind of all know that. Uh, so I think that helps. You know, Coach Chaney, Coach Ansley, Coach Pruitt, you know, <coughs> each one of those guys bring a different element. But, uh, but then you also have good people. Right? And, We've all coached a lot of the coach high school, uh, which means we were school teachers. So we teach the game of football now, and I think we have some of the best teachers of the game uh, in this building. When do you know what the guys got this defense? Because there's so much conceptual, it sounds like it's tough. When do you know that a guy's got it? Uh, well, I mean, I guess it becomes with execution. Uh, but then, you know, a lot of times uh, it's it's a new language, uh, and so. Every day, a new word, you know, or words are presented to them, and so you try to get ahead of it. And as they start to be able to interact and talk back and forth with you, uh, that's when you start to know they're starting to understand 
kind of the concepts and the language that they're speaking. Are they speaking that way? Oh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Compared yes. to where we were in the spring? Yes, because, you know, last year new words would, you know, come in or terminology and, you know, they have that blank look. Now it's like they know. So you're trying to get the young guys to understand what those words mean. And the, you know, so a lot of it's just the interaction that they're able to do the questions. With, with JJ after the later Iowans, the shoulder was bothered in the spring. How important is this time for him? And how would you look for him? Yeah. For him in the first couple of weeks. First go, you know, obviously for every guy on the team, it's important because it's that transition from summer to fall. You know, getting ready for the games to start. Uh, so he's, you know, he <coughs> expect him to have a better shot because last year he did come in later than the rest. Uh, you know, and um, you know he'll he'll do what he needs to do, and you know time will tell on that. But um, <laughs> all our guys are going to be pushed, and they're going to be competing for starting starting job and playing time. Shannon Reed was a guy that proved was very complimentary of us the end of spring. Yeah. You know, was he able to kind of continue that that strong work in the summer? And what have you kind of seen from him right before you guys start? Yeah, talking? you know, all the guys have done a really good job. Uh, and again, I, I think it's because this is the second go around. You know, first time it's you know you don't know what to expect. Uh, but yeah, he's done a really good job too. Um, you know, I know his numbers in the weight room have been up. You know, they're changing their body. The bodies are starting to grow a little more. Uh, and then in meetings, his confidence in the defense, you, you see that, like I was talking about earlier, the, the interaction. Sometimes you're going through it with the young guys and they're saying the answer before you get to it. So you know they have a better understanding of some things he does. Would you sense that the, the guys on that D-line have a, have a hunger to, to kind of step up and emerge with all those snaps that are now available? Because, you know, it's one thing you want to – you like to think they all practice the same way all the time, but it's – Maybe sometime when the playing time's on the end of the stick, it's a little different. You know, do you see something like that from them? Uh, you know, I mean, I think all the guys are ready to come in. You know, I think they, they want to show what they've done in the last you know year and a half that we've all been here. Uh, so I, I don't, you know, I don't know that I can see it from a position more than the other, other than the team's ready. To, you know, these guys, when we have a couple of days off, you know, from the weight room, and they're they're in there and in the room, running around, and, you know, working their thing. Craft, I guess you might say. So I think they're all excited. Coach, you talked about you talked about the second go around for the players. What about you as a coach? You know, having these guys that you don't really have to instill that culture now. You can talk a lot more schemes and things like that. In yeah, uh, you know, it's good because you, we know those you know these guys a lot better now. Last year, you know, we had basically six months with them at this point, roughly, and uh, you know, so you understand how they think, how they learn, how they re respond to coaching, you know, things like that. So. It makes it a little uh, so hard to be down easy, here. but it makes it easier for us to have an opportunity to kind of, you know, get to them a little bit 